What's going on guys? Jolts here, back with another build video. And today we're finally going to be covering a full pure pet build. Yeah, this is something I wanted to do since release, but we really have not been able to due to the pet's damage and the AI. Now that we have the fourth skill trees, the loader pet is amazing. Not only does the purple skill tree maximize your pet's damage, but the loader's AI and damage output is ridiculous. If you did somehow skip over the intro, I'll watch it again. None of the other pets can compete, and the warloader is number one. Anyways, if you do want to download the save for yourself, I will link it in the description. And that save is going to be in PC format. So the save's only going to work on PC. Cool, let's go ahead and jump into the build. Again, this is a pure pet build, so Flag's going to have no damage, but the pet's going to have all the damage. I do want to say that I am going to be using Terror Annoyance, and now they're not required, but that's what's going to give the pet damage because of this annoying right here. After issuing attack command, you consume all of your Terror for 200% fire damage bonus. Again, Terror is not required whatsoever for the build, but if you want to get the most out of your pet, I do recommend it. Your Warloader is already going to be doing so much damage that it really won't make a huge difference, but for bossing, it can help a bit. Alright, first up we have the Face Puncher, and now, because we're not really going to be focusing on healing skills, we gotta make sure we stay alive. So Face Puncher and the Knife Train Artifact combo, we shoot the enemy, and we jump back to full HP and get the most out of the Bass and Furious skill. Also, if your pet crit kills an enemy and activates Hollow Point, the Hollow Point Explosion actually adds to Groundbreaker. That means you can shoot the Face Puncher and deliver all that damage back. If you are going to be doing a Terror setup, you want to go for the Melee Attack Supply Terror Annoying. If not, you can use whatever you want, it doesn't really matter. The only other Annoyant that will actually add to pet damage is the Splash Annoyant. Yeah, most Annoyants in the game actually don't apply to your pet, but this Splash Damage Annoyant and the 200% Fire while Terrified do apply. So we have the Execute and the Eruption for debuffing the enemy, and also the Execute will stack the Furious Attack skill. That will give your pet a little bit more damage. With the Arms Race DLC, we did get the Res, and the Res is really cool, so when anything's in fight for your life, um, that could be a teammate, NPC, or your pet, you can shoot them once with this and get them a second win. Now, it's pretty rare your pet's gonna go down, but in case they do, you have this. Now we have the ultimate shield for the pet build, and that is the Faulty Star. With the new skill tree, we can now give our pet a copy of our shield, and when your loader gets a Faulty Star, that means it gets Mayhem Scaling and Pet Scaling. Yeah, so when enemies shoot your pet, you're gonna create a Nova on top of the enemy, and it's gonna hit for the pet scaling of 51 times damage. So basically, if a Nova happens, then the enemy instantly dies. Yeah, it's pretty crazy. If you are using Terror Annoyance, you want to go for the 200% fire damage. Otherwise, you can use whatever Annoyant you want, but just know that no other Annoyant in the game is going to really add to your pet. Like, this is the only Annoyant that's going to increase your pet's damage. Now we have the Red Fang, and this one's pretty important. So we're going to be using Gamma Burst, and enemies are going to focus only on the pet. We're going to reflect all of the damage back with He Bites and the Faulty Star. So if enemies shoot your pet, they're going to die. As for the passives, the only one that matters is Splash Damage. No other passive in the game will add to pet damage. Now, the only ones that can really help a little bit are Action Skill Cooldown to get your Action Skill back faster, and Splash Damage Radius just for the Hollow Point Guardian Rank skill. As for the skills, try to get as many points and Heat Bites as you can. For the Grenade, you want to go for the Hunter Seeker for mobbing, and the Fastball for 1v1s. Hey, guess what? The Warloader gets a copy of your Grenade, and that also gets Pet Scaling. So pretty much on Mayhem 10 at 51 times damage. If your pet throws one, pretty much everything in the area is going to die. As for the Anoint, it doesn't really matter what you use, because none work on the pet. I went for this one just to increase the fire rate on my execute. Finally, for the artifact, you want to go for a knife drain, whatever. Knife drain is going to make it to when you shoot the face puncher, you're going to stay at full HP. And that's really good because one, you're not going to die. And two, you will get the most out of the fast and furious skill. I did go for white elephant just so that flag can do some damage, but it's not going to help a whole lot. So you can use whatever you want for the suffix. As for the passives, the only one that adds to pet damage is the area damage. Otherwise, action skill cooldown just to get your stuff back faster. Now, you can put on a back burner just in case you want to get a second win, but you really don't need it because the pet's going to revive you. Also, it is pretty rare you go down because you have the face puncher and the knife drain. More faulty stars of all the elements, and now all the shields here, these are all optional, you don't need them, but they're just to mess around with for fun. Um, I did a lot of testing and nothing really topped the faulty star shield. Think about it like this, your pet can only focus on one enemy at a time, so any sort of reflect kind of damage is going to be the best. That is why the faulty star is so good. Then we have more Hunter Seekers, and a Fastball too, because the Fastball, one, when your pet throws it, it gets the 51 times scaling, and two, well, your pet can crit with any source of pet damage. That means your pet can throw a Fastball, and you can crit for almost a billion damage. Yeah, it's pretty silly. Again, Hunter Seeker for mobbing, and Fastball for your bosses. One more thing is, why not the light speed? Uh, the loader's gonna throw the grenade dead on the enemy, and so all of the humming child grenades that come out of the light speed never really come back to the boss. With that in mind, you lose a lot of damage, so the fastball does top it for bossing. 
I do have a Red Queen too, which works really well, but it can be unpredictable and I think the Hunter Seeker still tops it. The Dead Eye. This is for your bosses. For mobbing, you want to have on the red thing so enemies all focus only on your pet. But for bossing, you want to have maximum damage and control when you activate your splash damage annoying. So basically, you stack up all of your damage and release one very strong shot on your boss. If you do it just right, you can pretty much one-shot everything in the game. As for the passives, the only one that matters is splash damage. Finally, we have a cut purse just to get ammo back for your face puncher, but you're not going to really need it. Alright, that's it for all the gear, so let's go ahead and go over the skill tree. Starting off purple tree, we have the gotta go fast. That will give your pet bonus damage and movement speed. Now, I will say your pet's still going to be pretty slow. So once you clear one mobbing area and move on to the second, your pet's going to be pretty far behind. That is why Gamma Burst is going to be so good for this build because you can control where you put your pet. Next up, Success Eminent. We only did one point here to move down the tree because all of the other grayed out skills don't matter at all. So if you or your pet's shield is broken or filled, you will create a Radiation Nova. Now, even if you put 5 points here, the Nova doesn't really do the best damage, but again, we have to put a point somewhere to move down the tree. Agility Training. You and your pet get bonus reload speed. That means your Warloader's Hyperion Shotgun is going to reload faster, and in return will increase its damage per second. Throat Ripper. This is a major source of your damage. Your pet has an automatic chance for a critical hit. So basically, this is Mega Boar on your pet. And guys, this goes for any pet damage. That goes for if it reflects damage back with the Faulty Star, or he bites, or throws a grenade, whatever. Anything your pet does can be an automatic critical hit for massive damage. Take this. Your pet gets a copy of your shield, and that means he gets the Faulty Star. In return, that means if the enemy shoots your pet, they're going to get nova and instantly die. You want this skill. Monkey Do? This will give your pet 70% more critical hit damage. Again, with the Throat Ripper skill, that means he can crit with anything. You're going to massively boost that damage. Finally, only one point in Fuzzy Math. When your pet scores a critical hit, which will happen pretty often, you and your pet's going to get a small portion of shield back. So even if you spec pretty much all the shield skills in this tree, on Mayhem 10, you're not going to have a shield no matter what. The enemies will waste your pet's shield so fast that, again, you're not going to have a shield. So with one point here, we're going to be blipping our shield. What I mean is you're going to get a small portion of shield back, and then you go back to zero because you got shot. You get a small portion back again, and it goes away because you got shot again. Now, what is good about that? Well, the Faulty Star Shield triggers no matter how much shield you have. So if the enemy shoots your pet when you have one shield capacity, you can activate the Faulty Star's Deadly Novas. I hope that makes sense, but if not, I will be showing it later on. These skills are not needed because your pet's never going to die, uh, your shield's always going to be depleted with your pet no matter what. This does not the best damage, um, your pet's never going to die. This skill is pretty good, but you don't want super long Gamma Burst duration. Like I mentioned before, when you run forward, your pet falls behind. So with a short Gamma Burst, you can summon your pet back in the next mobbing location pretty fast. Keeping them safe, Fuzzy Math destroys the skill, and Capacitance doesn't matter because you're going to be blipping your shield. The Warloader dominates all because it has good AI, can throw copies of your grenade, and the attack command for the Missile Barrage does not have a minimum location. That means if you issue an attack command from way across the map, your Warloader is going to attempt to go for that kill. No other pets in Flax Trees can actually do that. Alright, now for Blue Tree, we have our Gamma Burst, Atomic Aroma, and Endurance. Gamma Burst will make it to where your pet can't die, and it will give your pet bonus radiation damage on its attacks. That is a really big deal because if your pet throws a Hunter Seeker, the bullets that shoot out of the Hunter Seeker will actually get that radiation damage too. Also, in combination with the Red Fang, enemies are only going to focus on your pet with Gamma Burst. Atomic Aroma? Your pet is going to be surrounded by radiation, and that also gets your pet scaling too. So if any enemies near your pet, they're going to die. Endurance. When your pet gets a kill, you get 3 seconds more for Gamma Burst, and also up to 50% bonus pet damage. These don't matter at all because this only applies for Flag, not the pet, and we already have infinite healing with our Face Puncher and Knife Drain. Ferocity. Your pet gets more damage. Go for the eyes. This skill is really good now. Normally with this skill, your pet's first melee attack will be an automatic critical hit, but this skill is adding to your pet's critical hit damage overall. That means with the Throat Ripper skill, anytime you hit one of those automatic critical hits, you're going to get this 75% bonus damage on it. That is huge. He bites, enemies shoot your pet, and it's going to get reflected back. That means if anything shoots your pet, they're pretty much going to die. Also, the 200% fire anoint while terrified applies to everything your pet does too, including reflecting damage with he bites. Now we have Frenzy. When your pet deals damage, you get a stack, and I can stack 10 times. That will give your pet 40% more damage. With the he bites skill, you're going to be stacking it automatically, so you're always going to have max stacks. Psycho head on the stick. This will give your pet more damage and movement speed if Black gets a kill. Now, that's not going to happen very often, but none of the other skills really matter in the skill tree. So, we did pick it up. Hive Mind. When Black takes damage, your pet gets bonus damage. Now, it won't happen very often because enemies are going to be focused on your pet while using Red Fang, but if a stray bullet does hit you, you get bonus damage. Also, all of the other grayed out skills don't matter for pet damage. Pack Tactics. 
You and your pet just get more damage and HP. Not a bad skill, be sure to grab it. All right, I do want to go over why we didn't grab certain skills. So we don't want longer Gamma Burst duration because remember the pet does fall behind when mobbing area to area. So you want Gamma Burst to run out fast and place it to the next mobbing area. Who rescued who? We're going to be using the Face Puncher so it does not actually give your pet the healing. Yeah, it has to be bullet damage. Also, your pet's never going to die due to the HP scaling on Mayhem 10 and also because the pet cannot die in Gamma Burst. Barbaric Yop only applies to Flag and doesn't give your pet any bonuses, so we don't need it. Mutated Defenses and Shared Spirit, your pet and you are never dying, so you don't need these. Finally, the new reworked Dominance skill. If you score a critical hit, the enemy becomes confused and will attack other enemies. That is really bad for the build because you want enemies to focus on your pet. If enemies are focused on the dominated enemy, that means your faulty star is never going to go off, you're not getting anything out of heat bites, um, you're losing a lot of potential damage. All right, now for green tree, we have our Sikkim. That will give you more attack command damage and reduce cooldown. The Warloader's attack command and missile barrage is really strong, so you want to be spamming that as much as possible. Furious attack. When you shoot the enemy, you get a stack, and I can stack 10 times. That will give your pet up to 30% bonus damage. The thing is, this only applies to when Flag shoots an enemy, so it does have to be bullet damage. That means that shooting the face puncher will not activate this, but you can shoot the execute to stack it, and I pretty much only used this skill for bossing. Eager to impress. When you or your pet gets a kill, you get cooldown. But when your pet does get a kill, it refreshes your attack command. That means you can keep chaining your missile barrage over and over. Now, the reason why we did max it out is because all the other grayed out skills don't matter. One point for all my BFFs, you will share a portion of your health regen to your pet. Um, the pet never dies, but we gotta put one point somewhere to move down the tree. Like the wounds? When Flag goes in a fight for your life, your pet can revive you. It's not very often you go down because you have the face puncher and the knife train artifact, but if you do, your pet can save you. Also, that gives your pet more damage too. Finally, we have the Fast and the Furious. Because we're always going to be at full HP with the Face Puncher and Knife Drain, that means you're going to get that 30% pet damage bonus. As for the grayed out skills, this doesn't matter, we're never going to die, we don't need more fire rate, that only applies to Flag. This only applies to Flag, and these two skills we don't have points to get down to. I would like the power inside because it does apply to your pet, but again, we don't have the points, and it's not really worth wasting a lot of points to get down to it. As for the Orange Tree, nothing. I know it is pretty rare to see a flag build without the orange tree, but the orange tree doesn't really offer much for the pets until you're like way down the tree. Now this does increase your pet's damage, but it's only if flag gets a kill. If your pet does get a kill, you don't get a stack of this. Um, there is one rare exception, which is hollow point. If your pet does get a kill, activate hollow point and kill another enemy. You can technically stack this, but it doesn't happen very often. Otherwise, the only other skills that can increase pet damage are here. Um, they are way too far down the tree and we don't have the points for that. Alright, that's it for the skill tree, so let's go ahead and show off the build. Like I mentioned before, the pet gets very far behind and doesn't know how to really pathfind forward. So that's why you want to use Gamma Burst without the long duration. So do that. And I'm just going to watch. So this guy, killed by Atomic Aroma. That guy shot himself, awesome. Yeah, you can see the faulty star going off. And once he throws that grenade, up oh, there's a barrel. Which is fine, we can get a revive. And yeah, pretty much enemies shoot the pet and they die. So once he gets the right distance, he's going to throw the grenade. So any second here. Well, they all died. <laughs> there it goes. Hunter Seeker. Shooting that guy. 9 million from one shot there. And remember, we get bonus damage from the Gamma Burst too. So it would have been about 9 million for the fire and then probably about 6 million for the radiation. All right, next area. Put you right here. Enemies focus on that. Check out this guy. Didn't stand a chance. Uh, grenade's going out. And these poor guys are so dead. Yep, one shot that guy. He died. Like I said before, you don't need terror for the build, but you can if you want to. So if you want to, you can uh, stack your terror, issue the attack command. It's going to consume the terror. And now everything your pet does for the next, I think, like 10 seconds, um, he's going to get 200% bonus fire damage. And that goes for everything. Bullet damage, melee damage, grenade damage, whatever. All right, put you right here. And let's go ahead and get a little bit of terror. Issue attack command. Uh, went for that guy. 11 million from one missile. But guess what? We have eager to impress, which means we have another attack command automatically. Because we got that kill. So now I can issue another one if I want to. Go for that guy. And look at that. There's no range on attack command. So if I really want to, I can attack command somebody across the map. And the loader's going to go for it. All right, let's go ahead and take on a boss. All right, now for Trot, we're going to put on the Deadeye. There we go. And we're going to do Shock. Uh, and then we're going to do the Fastball too. Shock Fastball. And we're going to be activating the Splash Noid. So you want to put on something to end your action skill early. So Rag Attack's pretty good. Proceed forward. 
And now he's going to be focused on me because of the whole not using Red Fang. Do that. And now he should throw a grenade pretty quick here. And there you go. One shot kill. And that wasn't even a crit either. Remember, any attacks the pet does can crit. That means the fastball could crit for even more damage. Now, if you want to, Red Fang can be used for bossing too. So we're going to go ahead and place the Gamma Burst. And uh, reflect the damage back. Do some debuffs. Why not? Let's also stack the Furious Attack. And there we go. Pack out the kill. All right, now for somebody a little bit more tough like Grave Warrior, let's go ahead and debuff a few times. And we're going to be activating our Splash Anoint, so let's go ahead and uh, do maybe five of these. You don't need too many. Issue Attack Command, activate Splash Anoint, and hopefully if you get some good crits. Okay, not a bad chunk, but if you do it right, you get the kill. All right, one more. Activate Splash, and goodbye. Okay, let's do a Reflection Kill. So we're going to use the Red Fang and place the pet right in front of him. So basically, any damage the boss does gets reflected back with the Palti Star and the Heat Bite skill. Alright, now for the final phase, check this out. He attacks the pet, it gets reflected back. Poor guy. <laughs> yeah, pretty much if enemies poke your pet, they're gonna explode into a million pieces. Anyways, I think that's gonna be it for the build, and I am happy we finally have a full pet build. I've been waiting for this since release, and we can finally do it. Um, like I said before, if you want to download it for yourself, I will link it in the description. And again, that save will be in PC format. Anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed the video, and of course, if you did, then please be sure to leave a like, because that'd be awesome. And if you guys really enjoyed it, be sure to sub. You guys have a great day, and I will see you all later. Peace out.